Azaria, good afternoon. Yeah, um, so. Okay, sorry, I think there's a problem with Miss Denti. Uh, it's, it's okay, Miss Rainey, let me continue this uh, webinar. Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mavindra. Pak Mavindra, you may to take over this uh, GLS. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Rainey. Okay. Okay, and then the second uh, uh, for the first speaker is Prof. Masato Tominaka, and then educational background. Prof. Masato Tominaka is doctoral, master, and bachelor degree in Kumamoto University, Japan. And then there are a lot of organization experience. For example, is in 2020 presents representative of the Japan Society of Analytical Chemistry, and then the research interest is electron transfer reaction of biomoleculars at electrodes interface such as carbon nanotubes, modified electrodes, and its application for enzyme catalyst fuel cell and microbial fuel cell. Okay, and then the second speaker is Mr. Rifai Wardani, and then educational background is 2008, Master in Mechanical Engineering, Universitat Lisbon, Essen, Germany, and then 2004 is Bachelor in Mechanical Engineering Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia. And then academic and professional experience, uh, lecturer at Department of Industrial Mechanical Engineering, and then member at Center of Excellent Mechatronic and Industrial Automation ITS, and then a member at Laboratory of Manufacture ITS. And then the research interest is CID, CIM, MBD and step step NC. Okay. Thank you for the warm welcome from Miss Denti Azaria. And then, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? The topic for this afternoon is guest lecturer series on sustainable development goals. Honorable Prof. Masato Tominaka from Saka University. Honorable Mr. Rifa Iwardani, Magister Science from ITS, and honorable participants who join this is who join this event. Good afternoon, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Mavindra from Materials and Metallurgical Engineering. I would like to welcome to all to you all to this presentation. And then this in this occasion, we would like to have a presentation from Prof. Masato Tominaka from Saka University. And we are going to discuss about nanocarbon material for energy conversation, conversion and electrochemical sensor. Without further ado, I would like to welcome the presenter to deliver the presentation. I would like to hand over the virtual microphone to Prof. Masato Tominaka. Professor Masato Tominaka, please turn on your microphone. Okay, thank you so much, oh, uh, Professor Bafindra Sang, uh, for your kind uh, introduction. So I will share my slide. Uh, the screen is clear for you, it's okay. Yeah, you yeah. can see it. You can see okay. your screen. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, everybody, uh, Selamat Siang. Uh, Namasaya Masato Tominaga, Saga University. So today I would like to talk about the nanocarbon material for energy conversion and electrochemical sensor. Okay, so... Okay, uh, first I would like to introduce my city and myself. Okay, so uh, our university is located in Saga City. So Saga City is the south part of Japan. 
So this is Japan. Oh, this is uh, Surabaya. So as you know, Tokyo is here. And Osaka and to Kyoto is close to Osaka. And Saga is uh, this. Uh, Saga is located in this island. This island is Kyushu Island. Fukuoka City is uh, here. So Fukuoka City is the largest city in the Kyushu Island. So Saga City is uh, close to the uh, Fukuoka City. It takes around one hour uh, by car. So Saga City is mm, not. So Saga City is a mm, local side and uh, no crowded. So you can see so very nice uh, food and nature and also um, there are many sightseeing places. So if you have a chance, please visit my laboratory, the Saga City. So I visited uh, ITS uh, many times. So my first visiting uh, Surabaya, ITS, and also Indonesia was 2013. So I had a seminar at the uh, chemical department. So there are many uh, so students. So now some students become uh, a, a docent, a teacher of the university. For example, he became a ITK uh, teacher and uh, she finished it, just finished the uh, doctor degree uh, at the uh, chemical chemistry department of ITS. And I think he became a staff of uh, uh, interna international office uh, and global engagement of ITS. So, and then so I visited uh, ITS every year, uh, sometimes twice a year. Uh, and I had, a, so I have a very nice memorial with you and with ITS staff and students. So, so at this time, so 2019, uh, I had a discussion with the rector of ITS about the uh, MOU between uh, Saga University and the ITS. And this is my last visiting ITS, so 2020, uh, before a pandemic. Uh, so this is January, so before pandemic. So after that, I could not visit the ITS. So, okay. Uh, uh, I have a, uh, this, this is my uh, project. There are four main projects. So one is the uh, bioelectrochemistry. I use, uh, I investigate uh, electro electrode reaction of uh, enzyme and bio-related molecule. The second one is the microbial fuel cell. So and the third one is the uh, electrochemical uh, catalyst and electrochemical sensor. And the last one is the um, condenser utilizing uh, tantal and conductive polymer such as a polypyrrole and the polypyro. If you are interested in the, uh, my research, please uh, join my homepage. I also prepared in Bahasa. Okay, my, today's my talk is about the carbon. Okay, so there are uh, three types of carbon, but uh, mainly two types of carbon. Uh, sp2 carbon and sp3 carbon so it depends on the uh, binding structure so diamond is sp3 carbon no so but there this is not this uh, diamond is not does not have a electronic conductivity so i'm electrochemist so i use a uh, conductive material right so sp2 carbon has uh, electric, electric conductivity. For example, the graphite and the graphene. And the shape, uh, so this, uh, this material has a very nice electric conductivity. Also furan is 
uh, this material is sp2 carbon so zero dimensional uh, so this is graphene no and the graphene is one seat of uh, the graphene seat so this is 2d a uh, two dimensional uh, carbon and then so graphene stacked many layers it become a uh, graphite also graphite has a very nice electric conductivity so this is a carbon nanotubes so so there are some type of carbon nanotubes single wall carbon nanotube it means it just only one layer of graphene seed so few layer world carbon nanotube and the multi world carbon nanotubes so this is, this carbon nanotube is one dimensional carbon okay this is the sem image uh, i observed before so this is the uh, single world carbon nanotube but and this one is multi world carbon nanotubes you can see a diameter uh, diameters are quite different to each other no? uh, single world carbon nanotubes uh, this diameter is very uh, small much smaller than multi world carbon nanotube uh, this carbon is uh, like uh, graphite um, maybe, maybe close to graphene like a seed structure this one is a glassy carbon powder. This is a circle structure. So there are many types of carbon. So this is a diagram of a carbon material. So this is diamond. Diamond does not have a, a electric conductivity. It's very low. Uh, carbon nanotubes has much, very nice electric conductivity also huge surface area so it means very nice uh, electrode material for our electrochemist also uh, graphite and graphene has the uh, no, uh, very nice electroconductivity but but are um, lower than the surface area uh, but uh, lower surface area than so this carbon nanotube so today i focus mainly focus on the carbon nanotube. So I'm an electrochemistry, so from the viewpoint of electrochemical electrodes. So uh, sorry, uh, this is um, my, today's my content. So I would like to talk about the futures of nanocarbon, especially carbon nanotube, and biosensor and biofuel cell utilizing nanocarbon and the enzyme and the last one is the uh, phosphate sensor uh, utilizing nanocarbon and metallic nanoparticles. The first one is the uh, feature of nanocarbon. Uh, this is the diagram of precision of carb carbon versus a produ production scale. So with the high quality CNT, the bulk use. Uh, for the bulk use, uh, maybe carbon nanotube can be used for the airplane and the battery. So my research area is here, chemical and biosensor something. Okay, so I have been using carbon nanotube for more than 20 years as an electrode material. So I would like to talk about what you need to be careful when you use carbon nanotubes to achieve result. So there are three, quality, contamination, and nano, nano size effect. Okay, first one is quality. Well, this is the uh, Raman spectra of carbon. Uh, this is carbon black, grassy carbon, the carbon paper, and this is the High oriented pyrotic graphite, HOPG. So you can see main two peaks. We call this peak G band around 160, 100. And this one is we call D band. 
G band is due to the graphene structure, graphene vibration. On the other hand, D band is due to the defect of a graphene structure. So you, so at the defect side, you can see a many functional group. So it means oxidized carbon structure. So this surface is hydrophilic surface. On the other hand, a graphene structure, the graphene structure, so there is no or less defect. So this surface is hydrophobic surface. So you can recognize uh, hydrophobic or hydrophobic structure surface by using a Raman spectra. So carbon black and carbon glassy carbon has large D band peak here. So we can guess. So this surface would maybe would be a hydrophilic surface. And the HOPZ, so there is no defect. There is no D band. It should be this surface is hydrophilic, hydrophobic surface. Okay, uh, this is the uh, Raman spectrum of uh, single world carbon nanotube I synthesized. So you can see large G band and very small D band. It means the, uh, this carbon nanotube does not have a much a defect. A little bit, uh, there is a little bit defect, but not so much. It means high quality single world carbon nanotubes. Uh, this is the uh, many types of, uh, this is a Raman spectra of many types of uh, carbon nanotubes. So we can buy uh, carbon nanotubes from the company, right? So, but the, the quality is, depends on the so company and the product uh, lot number. So for example, this is a multi-wall carbon nanotube. You can see large uh, D-band peak here. So multi-wall carbon nanotube has a much defect like this. So we can guess multi-wall carbon nanotube easily disperse in the water solution. But uh, this single wall carbon nanotube and I synthesized the carbon nanotube, uh, there is a, almost no deep band. So it means the surface is very hydrophobic. So this is also single wall carbon nanotube, but this deep band is very large, much larger than our, uh, my uh, single wall carbon nanotube. So you can, no, single world carbon nanotube, single world carbon nanotube, also this one is single world carbon nanotube. But no, so uh, the surface will be different, you no, know, different. You need to check the, uh, the uh, like this quality. So uh, this single world carbon nanotube, the quality is lower than these uh, nanotubes. Okay. Uh, so another one is also quality. Uh, when we synthesize carbon nanotube, we must use metallic, nano, metallic nanoparticles. For example, uh, this is some uh, result, TM, special TM result. So during a synthesis of a carbon nanotube, so this one is the metallic nanoparticles, okay? And then carbon nanotube growing up at the, this side. So nano, metallic nanoparticle surface. Oh, here, this is carbon nanotube and the metallic nanoparticles. So metallic nanoparticle is necessary for synthesis of carbon nanotube. So sometimes we can, uh, we buy, uh, carbon nanotubes, but sometimes uh, like uh, metallic, nano, meta, uh, metallic nanoparticles are contained in the carbon nanotubes. We are electrochemists, so, so this, uh, we can obtain 
uh, some redox reaction of uh, these metallic nanoparticles. Also, maybe these metallic nanoparticles affect some reaction. So we need to, to remove these metallic nanoparticles by using acid treatment and the strong sonication. Okay, after this treatment, we can remove all of the uh, metallic nanoparticles, but the surface is oxidized by strong acid treatment. Okay, so should be uh, this surface is uh, different each other. So also you need to uh, think about this, you know, uh, changing of uh, changing in the surface property. Of course, this surface is more hydrophilic surface than uh, this surface. So also uh, we need to see maybe after acid treatment and the ultrasonic treatment, maybe there are some uh, uh, graphene impurity, you know, peel off the, uh, some uh, you know, uh, graphite impurity. Sometimes this, this impurity affects the reaction. Okay, the next is contamination. So when we you know, prepare the carbon nanotube modified electrodes, we, at first, we disperse carbon nanotube in the solution. And then we cast this dispersed solution on the some electro surface and uh, dry it. So during the uh, drying process, maybe should be organic compound adsorbed on the electrode surface, a carbon nanotube surface. So after the drying process, should be the surface is contaminated by some organic compound in atmosphere. Okay. So, so I so I worry about the, uh, like this you no know, uh, uh, problem. So I prepared uh, carbon nanotube synthesizer. Uh, this is the uh, electric furan, and this is you know mass flow meter, and uh, this is electrode ethanol tank. So at first, uh, this is a cool tube. At first, I set electrode into the uh, uh, cool tube. Cool tube is set in the uh, electric furan like this, and then I use uh, ethanol as a carbon source, and then this is a vacuum pump. So ethanol gas uh, from here to inside the electric furan. So at this part, ethanol decomposed as an uh, atomic structure. And then carbon atom absorbed at the electrode surface and uh, carbon nanotube, carbon nanotube going, growing up at the surface. And this is a uh, photo of uh, our uh, electrode after carbon nanotube synthesis. So this is gold electrode. The surface is changed like a black after the carbon nanotube synthesis. Also, we can synthesize a carbon nanotube and as an electrode, a copper and iron, palladium, nickel. Uh, this is ceramic. So the thickness around 20 micrometer, but we can control the thickness. By, uh, yeah, we can control the thickness. And this is the uh, top view of uh, our carbon nanotube surface. So there are many bundled carbon nanotubes. So, and then this is a very high resolution TEM image. You can see a carbon nanotube layer like this one. So this uh, diameter around one nanometer, and sometimes two nanometers. Okay. so. So in my, uh, in my, uh, so I synthesize carbon nanotube, so I can remove, re remove like this problem. So, and I investigated the reduction reaction of cytochrome C by using our synthesized carbon nanotubes. So cytochrome C is electron transfer protein. 
Uh, this is the uh, membrane of uh, mitochondria. The cytochrome C is located here. So this is electron transfer protein. Active site is HEMC. So HEMC has the uh, iron atoms. Okay. But anyway, uh, this is the redox uh, protein. Okay. So when I use fresh, no contaminated electrode, we can observe the very nice redox reaction of cytochrome C, like this one. So the red color. After contaminated, after contamination, the redox peak is decreased. Right? So this is the uh, peak current versus uh, time. So when we use fresh carbon nanotubes, peak is clear. But suddenly, so this peak is decreased because the surface is contaminated. Not limited like this uh, uh, biomolecule. For example, this is uh, ferrocene. So this, this compound also inhibit, uh, this reaction also inhibited by contamination. So at first, so we can observe a very nice redox wave, but you know, inhibited and then peak is decreased like this. So we, so when you make a, 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 some nanocarbon modified electrode, you should think about like this contamination. And the last one is nano size effect. Uh, I use the uh, NUAD, NUADH. So exactly the name is nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. And this is coenzyme. So this NUADH is consists of uh, adenosine, so dinucleotide, the ribose, and this is a nicotine amide. Sorry, in there is some Japanese. So this is a redox site. No, this is oxidized form, and this is a reduced or uh, reduced form. Two electron, uh, one proton reaction. Okay, and the, uh, this is the uh, redox uh, oxidation reaction of NuADH at various electrodes. Uh, this is my electrode, single wall carbon nanotube. And this is high oriented pilot graphite, HOPG, grassy carbon electrode, and pyrotic uh, plastic formed carbon electrode. So, so um, GC and PFC, uh, these surfaces, uh, these, these surfaces have a lot of defects. So, hydrophilic surface. But HOPG is and single wall carbon nanotube, these are you know, a very similar surface, hydrophobic surface, and also uh, consist from uh, like this graphene structure. So, but please pay attention about the uh, oxidation current. So, HO, so at the, uh, this electrode, Oxidation reaction started from around uh, uh, zero volt, right? But at the HOPG surface, oxidation reaction started from around my 0.4 volt. Quite different each other, even you no know, similar uh, structure. Okay. So this is the. Uh, Mm. Some uh, image uh, of uh, adsorption, adsorption structure of NADH at the uh, HOPG surface and single world carbon nanotube surface. So HOPG surface is 2D two, two dimensional, so flat. On the other hand, a single wall carbon nanotube is like this tube structure. And also uh, this diameter is 
smaller than this molecule, NADH molecule. So I think, so these L2 chemical behavior, this difference in, difference in these electric chemical behavior due to the, uh, like this uh, nano size effect. Okay, I visited the, um, many times uh, ITS and Indonesia. Uh, also, I invited uh, many students and uh, uh, staff from Indonesia. So, yeah, now I, now I cannot invite, uh, but I will, I want to continue uh, invite, uh, inviting a teacher and a student after the pandemic. So this is some uh, no, memorial photo when the some uh, student and the person visited my laboratory. Okay, let's move to the another topic, biosensor and biofuel cell. Okay, uh, I we synthesize carbon nanotubes at the electrode surface, and this electrode immersed in the uh, enzyme solution. This enzyme is fructose dehydrogenase, FDH. Okay. So FDH adsorbed at the electrode surface, a carbon nanotube surface. Maybe so like this structure. And this is uh, carbon nanotubes, and this is the FDH molecule. So then this FDH enzyme oxidizes fructose. Okay. So it means this enzyme takes electron from fructose. And then this enzyme gives electron to the carbon nanotubes. If we achieve this reaction, we can observe the oxidized, ox, oxidation current. So we can observe oxidation current like this. So it means the, you know, this, the electron transfer between enzyme and the carbon nanotube is achieved. Also, this oxidation current depends on the fructose concentration. So, so it means the fructose sensor. So this is the uh, oxidation current, the versus fructose concentration. Okay. So this, so this current is depends on the uh, fructose concentration. This is the fructose sensor. Also, uh, I fit uh, mechanism mechanism maintain constant. Uh, we analyze mechanism uh, this constant, and they, uh, we decided some uh, uh, mechanism maintain constant like this. This is rock case. So that rock case reduced oxygen at this side, T two T three side. Another side, lactase oxidized substrate. So T1 side. So T1 side is consist of uh, no copper complex. T2, T3 side also consists of uh, made from uh, uh, copper complex. And then when, so enzyme absorbs on the electrode surface, carbon nanotube surface, Maybe like this electron transfer would be possible. So it means you know we can observe oxidation reduction current. So we prepared like this electrode surface. Uh, this is the uh, this one is the black case. So at this point. We observed very nice oxidation uh, reduction current of oxygen. So if uh, if uh, there is no oxygen, or there is no such a uh, there is no we cannot observe like this you know, catalytic current. So only observed uh, in the presence of oxygen. 
So it means, you know, like this, like this reaction is achieved at the electrostatic. So, so when we use brackets and FDH, we can make a, a biofuel cell. So this, this is an uh, electrode modified with single wall carbon nanogels. Uh, this is anode. This surface is modified is FDH, fructose dehydrogenase. Okay. This enzyme at this side, fructose is oxidized. It means the, uh, this electrode take electron from fructose. And then this electron move to the another side, this cathode. Cathode surface is modified with black case. So this enzyme reduced oxygen. Okay, this is a um, uh, biofuel cell, enzyme catalytic biofuel cell. And this is just a, this is just a demonstration Okay, uh, this is fructose solution, and this is the electrode. Uh, the surface is modified with the uh, lactase and the fructose dehydrogenase. I did not use any you know, metallic um, nanoparticle, metallic catalyst. I use just enzyme as a catalyst. Okay, so finally, uh, I would like to briefly introduce a phosphate sensor. Okay, phosphate is very important element. You no, know? uh, for the plant, uh, phosphate is essential element. But too much phosphate is no good. Maybe you can see such a green color of a lake, a river, maybe sea. It means too much phosphate in there. So we need to control the phosphate concentration. For monitoring of a uh, it is it is very important. Um, it is very important for monitoring a, a phosphate ion on site. Okay. So of course there are uh, some uh, nice. You know, detection method of phosphate is reported, especially a uh, spectroscopic method, very sensitive method. Okay, so this minus seven is a uh, very important concentration of phosphate. So by using uh, like this method, we can detect the uh, very lower concentration of phosphate. But the problem is, you know, this method is not good for the monitoring on site, on site, okay? Also, uh, some researchers use the cobalt electrode. This electrode can detect the phosphate, but uh, not so much, but not so high you know, sensitivity. We want to make a, a sensor uh, at around this detection range. So, uh, we since we use multi wall carbon nanochips. Okay, the surface modified is PBI. So PBI is PBI is like this polymer. No? to this part of multi wall carbon nanochip in the solution. And then uh, we synthesize cobalt nanoparticles at this surface. Okay, this is a, a TEM image of the uh, cobalt nanoparticles and the multi wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, this one, so black uh, circle one is the uh, cobalt nanoparticles, and uh, this one is absorbed at the uh, multi wall carbon nanotubes. Uh, this is high image resolution of uh, multi wall carbon nanotubes, uh, sorry, um, uh, cobalt nanoparticles. We can see very nice crystal crystallized form. It means uh, these nanoparticles. Uh, single, like a single crystal structure. Excuse me, Prof. I, Masato Tominaka. I, I'm sorry. I just remind you just five minutes left. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this is also very high resolution TM image. 
So uh, this is multi-wall carbon nanotube. You can see some uh, uh, carbon layer here. So, and then this one is uh, cobalt nanoparticles. And then this is PBI uh, polymer. So like this one. And then I you know we characterize uh, our uh, cobalt nanoparticles by using XPS and XRD measurement. It means the, uh, mm, so, oh yeah, uh, we obtain the cobalt oxide nanoparticles and the uh, crystal is very nice, uniformed, and uh, also similar like a single crystal pair. And then we so investigated the cyclic voltammetry and the uh, open circuit potential measurement, but there is no time, so I skipped cyclic voltammetry. I only talk about the uh, OCP result. Um, uh, this is a result at pH four at pH seven. So we can detect a very low concentration of phosphate because. So the potential of electrode is changed. So this potential depends on the concentration of a phosphate. You know? So even though 10 minus 10, very low concentration, we can detect. So I think we, are, we, can, we achieved uh, detection of uh, this very low concentration of phosphate. So this is my conclusion. So I would like I I ex explain nanocarbon as an electrode component. So please pay attention when you use the uh, nanocarbon. So you pay attention quality, the contamination, and the nano size effect. Also, a nanocarbon can be contribute to make high sensitivity and high output for biosensor and biofuel cell. So we prepare the uh, very nice phosphate sensor by utilizing uh, cobalt nanoparticles modified multi-wall carbon nanotubes. So yes, so this is the uh, yeah 2018 at Surabaya. Yes. 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 This is uh, my acknowledgement. Yes. Okay, I would like to finish. Terimekasi, thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you, Prof. Masato Tominaka, for the informative and interesting topic. And then uh, uh, there are a lot of photos that you already visiting Surabaya. Okay, thank you, Prof. Masato. Thank you. I stop the share. Okay. 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 Next, uh, I would like to give you an information. If participants have a question, you can write your question at link at the chat box Zoom. Or you can ask directly with raise hand and unmute your microphone at the uh, ask and question session. Okay. Hmm. Next presenter is Mr. Rifai Wardani, Magister Science from ITS. Mr. Rifai Wardani would like giving presentation about product data model evaluation in CAD and cloud manufacturing. Sound interesting, right? Okay, I would like to hand over the virtual microphone to Mr. Rifa Iwardani. Please, uh, Mr. Rifa I. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Rifa I. Okay, so yeah. Okay. See my presentations already? Yeah, you already share screen, but I'm sorry, the voice is a little bit uh, noise. Hello? Check, check. Yeah, your. Uh, 
Okay. Maybe it's... Uh, uh, make it smooth. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, okay. It's What about this? It's okay, okay. Clarify. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mavindra, as moderator for this event. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So today I'm going to deliver my presentations on GLS on SDGs, guest lecture series on sustainable development goals. Uh, actually, uh, maybe a couple of days ago, I got uh, information from Ms. Rainey that the big topic of today's event is uh, affordable and clean energy. But yeah, this is my presentation. So I hope it's still quite sweet with the, the big topic. I'm Rifai Wardani. This is my email address. I'm from Center of Excellence for Mechatronic and Industrial Automations ITS. And my present presentation title is Product Data Model Evolutions in Computer Aided Design and Cloud Manufacturing. Before I go to my presentations, I would like to introduce the PUIMIA or Center of Excellence for Mechatronic and Industrial Automations. Actually, in Indonesia, we call this PUIMIA Pusat Unggulan IPTEC, Mechatronic dan Pusat Penelitian Otomasi Industri ITS. So it's like, yeah, related to CNC machines, robotics, and industrial automation. We have locations like in the robotic laboratory. It's like you can see in the pictures. So this, we, uh, you can see the icon. You can access the website here. It's quite long, but yeah, just uh, if I send these documents in PDF, then you can click and go to the Puimia website. So I just go to the uh, topic. Uh, as a background, you can see the Industrial 4.0 and its technology enablers. Uh, if we state from the Western Consulting Group documents, there are nine technologies that uh, enable Industry 4.0. Number one is Internet of Things, then Big Data Analytics. Number three is Cloud, then Cybersecurity and Blockchain, Horizontal Vertical System Integrations, Simulations, Augmented Reality, Autonomous Robots, and the last one is Additive Manufacturing. So uh, my presentation today is very close to the, those two technologies, the horizontal vertical system integrations and, and cloud technology. So in this page, uh, you are going to see product data model evolutions in terms of mechanical design. You can see the first states, like maybe in 17th centuries, in the states, actually two dimensions proper drawing or manual drawing. So from the states, we have known like single view and multi view or orthogonal projections. Yeah, it's sounds familiar for a mechanical engineering students. It's like some materials in uh, technical drawing. And then uh, in manual drawing, we also use the drawing tables. Then in the second stage, in the maybe it's like 1970s, uh, we are in the two dimensions composite edit designs or 2D CAD was developed more than 40 years ago. In the States, instead of using drawing table, we use two dimensions computer aided design software to draw electronic drawing. 
So after we finish the two dimensions electronic drawing, we print out the two dimensions paper drawing. Then it's like in the third stage, we use the three dimensions computer edit design software, like since 1980s. Here, instead of uh, creating or generating two dimensions electronic drawing, we more likely to create three dimensions model. Then after we finish the creating three dimensions model, then we generate the two dimensions electronic drawing. Then we still print out the two dimensions paper drawing. Then we are going to the fourth states. They are called DMU or digital mock-up. Uh, this is quite different because in such a way, we are not only create three dimensions, 3D model, but also we build the geometry visualizations of the model. So we can see and we can explore the details of uh, the 3D model we created already. And the last states, we still generate the two dimensions proper drawing. So the common trait of the four stages, we still based on two dimensions paper drawing. What about the current situations? So actually it's called MBD or model-based definitions. So model-based definition is the main concern of product data model development. Uh, we can see the, we can uh, know the definitions of MBD is uh, an approach to develop product, manufacturing and life cycle support that use the digital model to drive all engineering activities. So the main idea of MBD is using model with all product manufacturing information on a 3D model as master data for all downstream users. So that's the, the, it's like the main idea. Then what about the current approach? This is the current approach that already exists. Uh, in the design process, a drafter, a person who, who create the models, design uh, process, use the computer to make three dimensions model and generate two dimensions drawing containing product manufacturing information required for the product. And then after it finishes, the design process finish, then it goes to process planning or we call that CAPP, computer edit process planning. In the States, uh, the two dimensions drawing that generated from the design states use, is used uh, as a master data. So, a uh, process planner with his knowledge expertise will use the two dimensions paper drawing to determine machining process, tools, and machining parameters selections, machining process sequencing, and setup planning. So he will use the CAPP software to convey his comprehensive process planning. After uh, the process planning finish, then the CAPP or CM software will generate the G code. And this G code will be executed in CNC machines. So this process is uh, for subtractive manufacturing. If we compare to the additive manufacturing, it's big difference. So the problem here is every state has the broken communications because they rely on the two dimensions drawing. The next question is, what about 
the users or client request or change geometry or modifications or change the dimensions. So the part designs that already uh, print out will be changed and reviewed by a drafter in the design process here. Then the communications will be back to the early states again. So after modifi modified, the two dimensions drawing will be generated in CAD, then will be used as master data for downstream users, for process planner, and for machining tool operator. So this, this action will take more effort and time and will be consequent uh, like this will be effect on production time and production cost as well. Number three, the problem is mostly there there are there is like centralized native data format like between CAD and CAPP system mostly like unified by the same native data format. So this uh, this the, the last problems. So what about the MBD approach? Uh, uh, mostly all processes are same as the previous one, but in MBD approach, we use the MBD file as master data. So we just uh, goes down all the process after designs using the MBD file. So we use the master data for downstream users. That's the first advantage. Then number two, if the modi modification happen, uh, it will take less time because we just modify them in modify the MBD files on the designs and then just directly change. I mean, like we just change the design and then we goes down with this master data. Another advantage, there is interoperable data or natural data format. So actually in the MBD approach, there is like natural data format. So we don't rely on a single native data format. So here is example of uh, visualizations of MBD. Uh, wait a couple of seconds. Wait. Here, uh, if you see the template, this looks like the like look familiar compared to the the two dimensional proper drawing. We can see the like the institution's logo, the title, the the person's name who draw the model, and it's like general notes and other items. And then we can see here, it's like the some views, like front views here, front views, left views, and isometric views. But actually, if you click the model here, you can rotate here. You can rotate, you can like move like here, zooming in, zooming out. So we can see more details of the models. So this is the example of the visualizations. And this is about the presentations and representations. In the MBD, we, we know it's like, uh, what's presentations, what is uh, representations. So, uh, Presentations is address how attributes and annotations are displayed for, for humans. I mean, like if we see the models here, presentations, we can see the geometric tolerance, geometric tolerance here. Maybe we can see the dimensions. So this is for human, for human interpretables or users readables. What about representations? 
representations means the how attributes and annotations are addressed for you computer or machines so it's called machine interpretables or semantic so we can see here the model this for humans it's like we we know the models geometry the shapes the geometric tolerance but if we convert this to the computer interpretables it changes the data format to representations so presentation is for human readables and representations for computer or machine interpretables so we know this p21 file this contains this data format for representations So in the model-based definition approach, the data model will carry presentations and carry representations in the final design. And the data model will be consumed for downstream users. So this about MBD and AP, 242. So actually presentations and representations also can be carried out in a natural data format. Maybe some of you knows the AP203 and step AP214 is uh, like there are uh, a natural data format. So the, the uh, I mean like the uh, ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, already published the ISO 10303 AP242 minutes model based 3D engineering uh, a couple of years ago. It's like 2015, actually. Yeah. Then this new application protocol actually published, was published for, to replace the AP203 and AP214. So, so with the AP242, actually it contains uh, presentations and representations. So all information like uh, geometry and topology, product manufacturing information in attributes and annotations is already included in one physical file. That's P21 AP242 or we can say that AP242 is model-based interoperability. So what about the, the cloud manufacturing? So this is the relations between model-based definitions and cloud manufacturing. In the concept of cloud manufacturing, actually, Cloud manufacturing is an agent who connect service provider and service consumer. For example, like this, service provider is a person or a company who has manufacturing resources, such as CNC machines, maybe like turning machines or milling CNC machines and so on. And a service consumer is a, a person or a company or a group who wants to do manufacturing processes, but they or he doesn't have any manufacturing resources. So actually he should buy or they should rent the manufacturing resources, but the cloud manufacturing will connect them together. It's like an agent. So in the first stage, service provider should do resource virtualizations. It could be dynamic, it could be static capability virtualizations. Then uh, the cloud manufacturing agent will offer a service to any service consumer. So the, the idea is a uh, service consumer who has the MBD file, model-based definitions 
uh, data model as a complete design uh, uh, definitions need to upload to the cloud manufacturing. So his 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 uh, MBD file can and could be uh, categorized as a request, service request. After a uh, service consumer upload as a request, then there is a matching process on the cloud. So it'll be like web semantics, like OWL. So, so in the left side, it's like a design for the design. On the other side, on the right side, is for the service consumer. I mean, I mean like service provider. So there's a matching process. So the cloud will match uh, the request to any available resources. If it matches, then the cloud manufacturing agent will give an order to service provider. So it's, it's similar to Gojek. I mean, you, some of you may be like familiar with Gojek. Uh, Gojek has uh, Gojek partners, like the someone or person who has vehicles, even like motorcycles or cars. Then the other side, service consumer, anyone who wants to use uh, Gojek partner service. Maybe he wants to go from A to B, then he can use the Gojek apps and he just uh, get notification from Gojek. A person who has the vehicles, then he pay with the GoPay. And that's all finished. That actually this is similar to the cloud manufacturing, but actually it's like still in the States, development States. I mean, like we should convert the existing files to to the file with the like semantic files. So that's the all my, my uh, presentations about the model based definitions and the cloud manufacturing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rifai Wardani. Thank you for your uh, interesting presentation and then next ladies and gentlemen we come to q a session and then there will be two session and each session is for three questions and then don't forget mention your name or if you want to ask directly you can raise your hand and Unmute your microphone. Okay, let me check a uh, participant. Uh, is there a raise hand? Okay, let me check the link. Okay, first is uh, there is a question for Prof. Masato Tominaka. What is the challenging during uh, for your research and then the second is what happened at your video if the dimension of specimen from one cross one become uh, for example five cross five maybe sorry I, I cannot catch the second question okay let me okay uh, first question is for prof masato tominaka yeah what is the challenging during your research? So what 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 what, what type of research? No, uh, no, not specific. Maybe the the first one, the the topic, the first one about uh, let's say graphen. Graphen, graphen. Yeah, and then there is a video, uh -huh. video from uh, Prof Masato Tominaka, and there is uh -huh. a dimension. One, uh, one, one cross one. Uh -huh. uh, and then what happened if the dimension of specimen become five? Uh, it's bigger than one, one. What happened? 
so, so, sorry, so, sorry, I, I cannot catch the uh, question means. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, okay, okay. I, I, yeah, I can, I can guess. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And how about the second question? I think th there are two questions. First is what the challenge is during your research. What is the yeah. challenge? Yeah. And then the second is one. what happened with the dimension. 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 Yeah. Oh, dimension of nanocarbon? The dimension for nanocarbon, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, great uh, question. So I shared my slide. So. Uh, so now. Uh, yeah, this video. Yeah, video. Yeah, in in this case, we we used only enzyme as a catalyst, no uh, metallic nanoparticles. So also we we can prepare uh, this electrode yeah. made from made from uh, a paper. Paper. Yeah. yeah, paper based electrode. Of course, the paper is not does not. Have electric electric conductivity, so paper surface modified with you know very thin carbon film, and then surface is modified with enzyme, and then if we put on the our skin, so maybe we can make a uh, electronic power from the skin, and also you no, know, we maybe we can use the contact lens. So we you know, so some top group can prepare the very small you know, electrode inside the contact lens. And then the enzyme, the, also the electrode is modified with the enzyme also, and then can make electronic power by using the glucose containing the uh, tear. So, so it is, you know, so, we can use the uh, power source for the sensor. So, so you no, know, so sensor requires some some electronic power, right? So, but you no, know, the sensor requires a very small you no know, electronic power, very small, sometimes nanowatt level, not milliwatt. Nanowatt. So, as a, so, and then sensor can detect the glucose concentration, maybe uh, some uh, a substrate concentration from the skin, and then this device can data can send data to the another device. Not so far, but maybe one meter, two meter, from the sensor to my. Uh, Apple Watch and uh, some uh, iPhone, something. So we want to develop this uh, bio microbial uh, uh, enzymatic fuel cell for the developing a uh, uh, sensor uh, device, Elect uh, energy source for the sensor. This is my you know, dream, one of the dreams. So another, is it okay? Maybe okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the, so I'm not sure about the dimension. Uh, so the question about this slide or, uh, or this slide, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Prof. Masato yes. Tominaka. Uh, I think from the video, you use electrode one cross one centimeters, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes. Ah, and then what happened if the the electrode use uh, five cross oh, okay, okay, okay. centimeters? Okay. <laughs> okay, I understand. There is a different dimension. 
Oh, yeah, I understand. Yes, of course. No, so when we use more large electrode, it means surface is larger. So it means we can modify enzyme more, much, right? So enzyme quantity is increased. So it means we can obtain the more higher current electronic power. So, so obtained electronic power is depends on the size of the electron. It's okay. Uh, so uh, it, uh, if the electrode bigger, so yeah. more efficient the result. Yeah, efficient is but, almost same. Uh, yeah, not increased. Maybe decreased. Efficiency is decreased. Maybe decreased. Okay. Maybe decreased. Because okay. uh, if an electrode is bigger, you know, so enzyme, so uh, another important point is diffusion of substrate. So if a, a very small amount of enzyme, you no, know, there are lots of uh, substrate around the enzyme, but there are many the huge you know, enzyme quantity. So this substrate is limited because the uh, substrate must be diffused close to the enzyme. So, so much if we, um, there is a if there is a much enzyme, the diffusion limited, Dif and, uh, substrate diffusion limitation is happened. So efficiency will be decreased. Oh, maybe decrease. So yeah. I think uh, maybe this the electrode one cross one centimeters is the optimum result. No, no, no. We can use oh. more ten cent, ten by ten centimeter. Okay. Yeah. Yo. So, yeah. Yeah. So yes. So 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 about ten ten times larger. There is no problem. The current is ten times larger when we use ten times a larger surface area. Okay. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Masato Tominaka for your answer and for your explanation. And then next question is for Mr. Rifai Wardani. So I stop the share. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, question for Mr. Rifai Wardani is, uh, what do you think about uh, Python? Is there any correlation with computer aided design or CID? Python programming language, you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Python yeah sure. Uh, if we like learn CID, actually, we are not only like use the the CID itself. We can develop it like the API. It's like uh, it's like for user interface, so we can uh, modify the the process. So actually, Python could be maybe in the uh, SolidWorks API. I think. Yeah, some 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 of uh, people use the Python, and then the others like for for me it's like use the C plus plus. So Python and C++ is still uh, using for CID? Yeah, 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 we can use that, yeah. Okay. So like SolidWorks API, for example, it's like SolidWorks API, uh, it's like we use the C++. So actually, we, we, actually you can use the SolidWorks, like just click and then you create something. But actually, using the, the your programming language skills, you can like more reliable applications using that. So like yeah, the 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 popular programming language like Python. I think you can use the Python too. Yeah, because I as uh, I read about at the newspaper, Python is uh, basic programming with hype. For this year. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's correct. Yeah. 
<laughs> and C++ is like the oldest one. <laughs> C++ is the oldest one. How about the Turbo Pascal, Mr. Ripa? I think Turbo Pascal is the yeah. oldest one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is quite old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any question from the participant? Participant, if you you can ask directly, you can raise your hand and unmute if you have a question for. Prof. Masato Tominaga and Mr. Rifai Wardani. I already read the question at the chat box and then I already delivered to Prof. Masato Tominaga and Mr. Rifai Wardani. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there is uh, there is a uh, raise hand. Okay, from UTM, Dewi Amelia, you can unmute your microphone. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My question is for Tominaga Sensei. I am a student from Malaysia Japanese uh, Institute of Techn Technology in Malaysia. So uh, my question is, when we study about sensors, um, in this subject, what is the best advice uh, for us as a student to consider to get the best result because as a student during the, pan the pandemic, uh, we only have very short time to explore this subject. Okay, so, uh, sorry, what's that? Today, with your question is which sensor? Uh, yeah, regarding the sensor, what's the best Not advice? Phosphate sensor? No, just sensor. Huh? I'm sorry? So, I could not catch your uh, uh, so first sentence, sentence of your question. Uh, regarding the uh, phosphate sensor that you phosphate were saying. Sensor. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Mm. But not specific phosphate sensor, right? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, great question. Uh, mm, so, so, at first, we need to think about um, what, which, so detection, so which so compound is important for meaningful. For example, so the phosphate is the phosphate ion is very important for the uh, environment. Maybe amoxicillin is important for the uh, keeping uh, environment. So we need to think about to you know uh, to target molecule, target compound. No, so and then. Next, we need to think about we have how to detect that one. Some reaction. So in, I am an electrochemist, so I use the uh, redox reaction, oxidation reaction, the reduction reaction of, of the that compound. Maybe so analytical chemist, maybe you use the uh, some uh, you know, sort of spectroscopic method, right? So if you use the electro electrochemical method, so that compound maybe suitable has a uh, electronic conductivity, or can this material, the target molecule, has the uh, redox reaction, oxidation or reduction at the electro surface, maybe more easier to make a sensor. And then we need to think about inhibitor. Inhibitor. Yeah, maybe the target molecule can react at the electro surface, but another compound also reacts at the surface. Maybe another so inhibitor, another compound can react oxide at the electro surface or reduce at the surface. So we need to think about the so remove the uh, such uh, inhibitor by using a film or uh, another method. So no, very complicated. So I can I cannot explain <laughs> exactly, but uh, yeah, this is my suggestion. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. I get the point. Yeah, you are welcome. Thank you for the question from UTM, Miss Dewi Amelia. That yeah, really nice. So nice, yeah, really nice, nice question. Discussion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, participant, if you have a question, you can raise your hand and then you can unmute. And then wait a second, let me check the link of the link at the chat box of Zoom. Wait a second. Uh, okay. okay, I think there is no question. Okay. Finally, let me uh, ask for one more time for the participant, any question for Prof. Pasato Tominaka and uh, Mr. Rifa Iwardani. So maybe my talk is you no know, little bit difficult for the audience. <laughs> maybe no. too specific. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, Prof. Masato Tominaka. Okay, okay, let me. Okay, finally, if there is no question, I would like uh, I would like to say thank you for the speaker who giving informative and interesting talk. And thank you for the participant who joined this event. My closing statement is quote from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which can use to change the world. Hopefully the presentation will be beneficial for everybody, for participant for this webinar. Thank you for your attention and back to Miss Denti Azaria. Okay, thank you Pak Mahfindra and thank you very much Professor Tominaga and Pak Arifai for the excellent yeah. lecture today and thank you to Pak Mahfindra for guiding us through this amazing session. And please give a round of applause to our speaker and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature. <laughs> thank you. And furthermore, we would like to present wow. a scientific <laughs> wording to our speaker and also our moderator today. And and this is the certificate for Professor Masato Tominaga. Oh. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so <laughs> and next we have the certificate for Mr. Ifai Wardani, STMSJ. Thank you. And last but not least, we have certificate for our moderator, Pak Mafindra Ramadhani. Thank you. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much to our speaker and moderator for, the, for your availability on today's guest lecture series. We believe that your lecture will be useful for all the participants. And now uh, we have, um, uh, maybe I will read uh, for the participant, I will, yeah. Okay, before we end our lecture today, we invite all the participants as well as the honorable speaker and moderator to take a group photo. And to all the participants, please open your camera as we have two slides only. So it will, will be quick. I will count one, two, three, and then we will take the picture together. So I encourage all the participants to open the camera. Okay, maybe for the uh, committee that can help me to take the photo. I will count to three. So for the first slide, one, two, three. And for the second slide, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> now we have finished our uh, group photo and I will remind all the participants to fill the feedback form through the link bit.ly slash feedback underscore GLS mm -hmm. that you can also see on your Zoom chat room. And the deadline for filling the feedback form is one hour after we finish this session. And we want mm -hmm. to remind you that the participants who will get stamped 
are the participants who come on time, join the event until the end, and also fill the feedback form. And for the next week, we will have um, three interesting topics in two different streams that we will uh, talk about the SDGs goal number nine, which is the uh, industry innovation and infrastructure. And for the first stream, we will have Associate Professor Muhammad Najib Muhammad Yassin from University of Malaysia Perolis uh, that will be delivering a topic about how artificial intelligence will change the future. And we, next, we have a Dr. Hyrule Najmi Abdul Rani from University University Malaysia Paralyst as well, that will be delivering a topic about communications and artificial intelligence. And the next stream, we have Dr. King Wu from Central Queensland University that will be delivering a topic about simulation of train dynamics. And finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series. And we sincerely apologize for any mistakes we may have made in presenting as Master of Ceremony and Comedy. And thank you very much to our honorable speaker, moderator, and all, all participants for the attention and cooperation. And we hope to see you soon in other events in the future. And do not forget to follow our social media in Instagram and, and Facebook, ITS International Office, and keep updated for our programs. Good afternoon, everyone. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum Thank you so much, Professor Tominaga, Pak Rifai, Tama Indra, for you. to share your expertise uh, for today. Thank you to all participants. Uh, let uh, allow me to end this session in five, four, three, two, one. Stay safe all, and you. see you next week. See you next. Yeah. Thank you. Uh,